Hey, this is Wes. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can fix seams caused by displacement maps. We're going to look at two options, one using a brush and the other using a generator. So let's jump into Substance Painter and check it out. Here I have my motorbike helmet, and I'm going to be talking about how this padding was created. So the helmet itself was completely modeled in ZBrush. Now, all of the details from the padding, that is coming from a substance material. So let's come over here to the layer stack and turn off my layers. And here you can see that ZBrush was used to just generate that underlying shape and form. Now, like I said, all of the detail is coming from the materials. And that's just a great way that I like to work using Substance Painter. With Substance Painter, I can work really quickly. And relying on a material to help generate that information means that I didn't have to spend a lot of time hand sculpting some fine detail. I could just let the material do all of the heavy lifting and be able to create that detail for me super fast just using Substance Painter. So I'm going to take the material, I'll drag and drop it here into my layer stack. And for the projection, I'm going to leave this at UV projection and I'm going to set my tiling to a value of three. Now real quick, let's take a look at those UVs. So if I go to my 3D, 2D split, you can see this is my UV layout here for the padding. Now the model, like I said, was in ZBrush. I then used Z Remesher to create new clean topology. And then the UVs were actually created in another application. So once I brought those into here, I was able to use uh, some of the UVs themselves to help aid in the masking process. And so again here, this is the section that I'm working with. I just wanna show you what those UVs look like. So let's go back here to that 3D mode. And let's take a look at this padding. So like I said, we I went on ahead and set this here to a value of three for the tiling. Let's look at that first uh, round of masking. So what I'm going to do is just come over to the layer and I'm going to create a black mask. And for the mask, I like to jump into here and use a paint effect. I always use a paint effect instead of painting just directly here into the mask. Number one is because I'm able to just, you know, give this a name. So for example, I could say, hey, this is my mask. I can turn it on and off. I have some blending modes I can use, later opacity. I can copy and paste this effect and so on and so forth. Just makes it really easy to kind of, you know, try to keep this, you know, close to as non-destructive as I can. So I have my mask. To create the mask, I'm going to jump over here to my polygon fill tool. This is set to my UV fill set to white and then I'll just click here in that shell. Now you can see here, now let's zoom in pretty close. I just want you to see the topology here as well. What I selected was the actual UV shell. So if I alt click here on my mask, you can see that this is the shell that's created. However, I'm actually working with a continuous piece of geometry here. It's pretty dense, but I have this nice continuous piece of geometry. And so at this point, it's working pretty well. It, this looks like a pretty seamless uh, material being applied here. It's very clean. However, the problem is going to be when I want to actually displace this. I don't want this to be just this flat, normal uh, map driven texture. I want to create some actual geometry here. So to do that, we're going to jump over here to the layer and I'm going to turn off my normals and then I'm going to turn on the height channel information for this material. And as soon as I do that, now I have some nice displacement. If we take a look, you can see that uh, the material is actually providing some, some really nice padding details here. I didn't have to hand sculpt any of this. I'm just using the materials data to create all this geometry for me. And this is, you know, again, like I said, the reason I wanted to leverage Substance Painter to create this detail. The problem that I have here is that everywhere I have my UV seam, I'm getting this kind of cracked displacement seam problem. And so it's just kind of exploding out around these seams. And I need to go in and address this issue. Now, something else I like to point out is you'll notice that I did turn off my normal map. So, you know, what we do is we take the height information and we convert that to a normal so that you can see that here in the 3D view. However, when I enable the normal on top of that, I kind of get this effect of the normal being applied twice. You get this kind of double intensity value. So what I like to do in cases like this I want to make sure that normal channels off because really where all my detail is coming from is, is straight from this tessellated geometry. And speaking of that, let's take a look at my shader settings. So if we come over to the shader settings, you have this uh, displacement and tessellation tab. Here you can see that my scale is actually set to 0.1 and then I have a subdivision count. So if I set this all the way to zero, you can see that this is giving me some, you know, pretty poor chunky results. And then I just subdivide the geometry up enough that you know, I get a nice clean result, but I also have some nice performance here in Substance Painter's viewport. Now what's great about this technique, and the reason I like to use it so much, 
is that I can create this as actual geometry. And then instead of just relying on exporting at a height map and rendering that, which I could do, I like to, you know, in many cases, just go ahead and export the geometry. So I can come over here to file, export mesh, and choose to export this mesh back out with displacement. So now this new geometry I'm creating will actually be there. And that's, that's pretty awesome. However, we really need to go in here and fix these edges. So it's really simple to do. I'm going to show you two techniques here. The first one, let's take a look at just using a paintbrush. So in my mask, what I can do is just come back over to my effect. I'm going to add a paint. Let's just name this seam fix. I'm going to leave everything at default. However, for my brush, let's see, let's just scale this up. And I am going to just change the value from white to black. So I can hit X key on the keyboard just to quickly toggle that. And then it's a matter of going in and just painting around the edges here. And you can see that what I'm doing is essentially just kind of erasing out the, the actual height information around those seams. And this, is, this becomes a pretty good little technique here. So I can go in and just kind of do this. And you can see that I just want to be careful about what I'm doing. I, in this video, I'm just being quick about it. But you see I'm starting to get, you know, just some, some edging here that I don't really like. So there's a couple ways that you can fix that. Number one would be, first off, if you're using a pen with pressure sensitivity, that will go a long way. In my case here, I'm just using a mouse. But again, like I said, if you're using pressure sensitivity, you can adjust the flow and stroke opacity and just kind of build this up just little by little, just to make sure you're not getting any kind of large discrepancies between the height information. So like I said, I'm not being super careful over it here. I'm just kind of quickly just painting out that seam and you can see what that's doing. Now let's just come over here and just fix this edge, just quick painting it. it. It's pretty awesome. Now I can also come into this section right here and let's fix this. I'll just go in and paint, you know, just tuck that uh, information. It's, it's like sculpting a little bit here in Painter, you know, not nearly as good as say using something like ZBrush, but it's great for, you know, at, you know, fixing little details like this. Like I said, I love using this. This is quick and simple. I can make quick changes to that. Another thing that's awesome, since I'm using the substance material, I can make changes here. For example, the small fold intensity, if I want to decrease or increase this, or the overall deformation intensity. Look, I can change all this on the fly and get different results, and it's recomputing that tessellated mesh. So that's a pretty powerful way to work. So again, let's just go back. Let me grab my paintbrush again. Let's just fix this little area. So you can see, like I said, I'm being kind of haphazard with it. Another thing that I can do to kind of help fix this would be to maybe go in and add a filter here and let's just grab say something like a blur and then I'm just kind of blurring that seam as well. So that really kind of helps, especially in areas like this, you can see where, you know, I, I, I don't really like what it's doing with, I'm getting kind of more of an edge. So if I just blur that, that really fixes it a lot. So that looks pretty nice and clean there. And then, you know, where I've kind of blurred that height information, I could always go in and add, you know, just some additional kind of noise or something in there. To, to help blur that out as well. So this becomes a really great technique. And now that I have this set up, I can just, like I said, go in and just kind of paint around and fix all these seams. Like here in the back, I don't like what's going on here. Look at this, just go in and just kind of paint that around. And like I said, where I'm starting to kind of blur out too much of my height information, I can always, you know, bring my brush back. You can see I'm gonna lower the opacity setting and then just kind of paint that seam back in. And maybe real quick, I'll fix this bottom piece. So we'll go in and just kind of paint that out really quick, toggle, and just bring some of that data back. Works really good and uh, gives, you, gives you some pretty nice results. Like I said, just the more careful you are with it, the better it's gonna be. Here, I'll go in and just kind of fix that little seam right there. Perfect, you can get really, really nice and clean with it. All right, so that looks pretty good. So that's one technique. And like I said, something like this was really fast to do, no problem. But now I wanna show you another option you can take, which is an even more procedural result. So let's come over here to um, our, uh, our actual masking and let's delete the blur and the seam fix. Here, make sure we delete both of those guys. And so what I wanna do now is come back over here to my effects. I'm gonna add a generator this time. And for the generator, I'm gonna use this option here called UV border distance. And so this generator is using a unique feature of Painter which allows you to work with input from the mesh. So that's what this filter is doing. It's basically taking that UV border information and it's going to uh, allow me to create a mask based on the, well, the borders of the UVs. So let's use this. We're gonna use this option here. We're gonna select this generator 
And now I'm gonna come over here to my blending mode options and I'm gonna set this to multiply. So now I'm gonna play around with the parameters to fix the seams. So I can adjust things like the overall kind of balance and the distance and the smoothness. So the smoothness is really gonna help me here. So for example, you can see that I'm, I'm have, I see these cracks where the displacement is. So let's just increase our smoothness here. So I'm gonna play with the smoothness and also with that balance. So we'll bring our balance down and our distance. And again, I'm just tweaking these values until I get this to work just like I want. There we go, that looks pretty good. And with just a few adjustments here of the slider, and again, I'm gonna pull that distance in so I get more of that displacement back. And there you can see I have my displacement, but check this out. The seams are really nice and clean now, and I didn't have to do any painting. It's all, it's working really great back here. This is actually the best option. You can see that I can go in and just, you know, play around with uh, any of these sliders here to get this to work. But essentially what it's doing, if we take a look, is it's created this mask based on the UV border. Now, where this technique can kind of fail on you is that it really is reliant on how your UVs are laid out. You're, again, so like I said, it's creating a mask automatically around the UV borders. Like I said, I didn't have to bake anything. That's, that's great. It's just based on the UVs. But just be aware that you do have to be a little bit more conscious about how you're actually working with your UV layout. But other than that, you know, it's, it's awesome and it's quick. And it was really easy for me to create this mask just based on the UVs using this UV border generator. And so now you can see that there it is. We have our displaced padding. It's all inside the helmet. I didn't have to hand sculpt any of this. And I can also quickly just go to export mesh and export this tessellated mesh that I can then use in any other 3D application. That concludes this video. Fixing displacement maps in Substance Painter is quick and it's easy. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.